We're live. So the point of this screencast is going to be how do we how do we make a Twitter bot? Um, the point the the inspiration for this was 100 days of code. So 100 days of code is a, like a program. It's a thing that you can do to basically bootstrap your education into web development and programming in general. And I think it's pretty cool. So to sort of celebrate it, I made a Twitter bot that just instantly auto likes and retweets people that are participating in this because I think it's a really cool thing. And I also use it sort of devilishly to, uh, you know, retweet whatever I'm working on so that I can also help people personally. Um, so this is what I've done so far. It's a very, very simple uh, Twitter bot. Like I said, it auto retweets and auto likes. And the nice thing is that it's instant. Um, you can also do this yourself. There's nothing that mystical or magical about it. It's, it's pretty simple. For what it's worth, uh, I'm in a bar right now. It's just empty, but that's like the mood lighting and the music. Uh, just thought you should know that. And if you have questions, I'll be going back to Twitch to make sure that if there's something that I'm, I'm doing too fast or whatever, you can let me know. But the objective is that by, end of the, by, by the end of this, you have a very good understanding of what it takes to make a Twitter bot and to make a Twitter bot that is not going to retweet bullshit because we don't need that in our lives. All right, so we have this account, 100 Days of Code, and the only difference is that there is a underscore right at the end of it. So the other bots that I have set up, you can find them by hitting the following and then in it, we're gonna set up moms can code and women can code. The objective being that these bots do the same thing that 100 days of code does, the difference being that it does it for moms can code and women who code. So we're trying to, we're trying to celebrate people in tech. So how do we start, right? So when you start using Twitter, what you can do if you have verified your phone number, it, to verify your phone number, you go to the, uh, where is it? You should go to settings failing you right now. Here, you go to settings, and in settings, you would just make sure you have your phone number. You don't have to be in the United States. You can just put any phone number you can you can verify. So I've done that for the account. So that, that step is done, right? So step one is we have to make sure these accounts are good. Step two is we need to initialize the app. Uh, okay, just check for questions. Okay, so to initialize, we go to apps.twitter. Oops, twitter.com. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> cool. So, like, we make a bot. Um, it's pretty simple. The thing that we care about is the secret information inside of keys and access tokens. Now, I'm smart enough to not open that, um, but the point is that the way that our bot works with the internet is we get these special keys. There's four of them. There's like consumer token, consumer, the point is there's four of these like special codes and they all look like gibberish. They're all like screwed up like that. That's how we talk to Twitter's API. Now this whole thing is gonna be in Go and we're gonna specifically use a package called Anaconda, which I don't know why it's called that, but whatever. So to, to find this, you can go to godoc.org Godoc is where you can find Go source code that is open source and well documented. I want to say, uh, <laughs> you can see what I've been watching lately. Uh, so we can go to um, just Twitter. I don't know why I'm blinking on that. So we search for Twitter and I'm using the first one. Now, if you want another video to help you with this process, I learned from another one on YouTube called uh, Just for Funk. And it was episode 14 where, uh, right, this one, where he goes really slowly and talks about the steps that I've already talked about. I'm gonna go a bit faster and, and, and do some more advanced things, but I just wanna show you, you can also use this video to help you if you feel overwhelmed at, at any point. Okay, so in here is a well-defined API for doing everything. And the thing is, this is gonna be super intimidating, right? Like. When I think about Twitter, I'm like, okay, I can DM, I can like, I can comment, but I don't, this is insane. So don't feel overwhelmed because we're gonna make our own abstraction for dealing with Twitter's API and the enormity that it is. Okay, let me just check for questions. Hi. Oh, I got six people. This is amazing. This is so cool. 
you're like here with me. That's so cool. By the way, I think I was planning on making this about an hour total, so maybe like 50 minutes since now, since we started, um, just so you have sort of a sense. And then this is all going to be on YouTube after, so don't worry if you need to leave or I'm too boring and you want to watch me at like 2x speed. Totally cool. If you, <laughs> Twitch is becoming this like recursive screen inside of a screen. Sorry, that might be annoying. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so once you install Go, you can install Go by going to goling.org. Pretty simple installation. You don't have to like use NPM or none of that. You just like download this really nice thing and it does it for you. So I don't think that that needs any instruction. Once you're set up, what happens is you can create a folder. So I've created a folder. I go to like CD here and I do Twitter bot. So we're inside of here. Now by default, you're gonna have three folders for any time you're working on a Go-related project. Now I have a few, I have uh, two more, but you can just ignore ENV and, what's a packet? And ENV and doc, those are irrelevant. Anyway, the structure of a Go program has a bin for binary, it has PKG for package, and SRC for source. All we care about is SRC. So once you've made those three folders, then we can go into SRC, and here I've got my, my files. Now I'm gonna put this on probably GitHub, so you don't need to worry. I'm gonna put all this online. Um, so anyway, uh, here is the state of the, the, the bot that I'm using for 100 days of code. Uh, code. The, the bot that I'm using for this, I'm gonna show you the code for it now, and then we're gonna adapt it for the other two accounts, one at a time. So we care about, Bot3, so let's do sublime, bot3.go. Let's check for questions. Cute, okay. That's okay, don't worry about it at all. Um, here is our bot. And I'm just gonna show you, it's less than 100 lines of code, and I've got some code in here that we don't even need. So it's not that bad. Basically, all Go projects have package main at the top, which indicates what the current, like, it's, it's like the module, it's, it's uh, the place that you're in in your program. So this is our main. The main is where we start our program. These are my dependencies. These are dependencies that I get for free when I install Go, because they're from the standard library. Then the, this is the one that I'm getting from GitHub, right? This is the Anaconda uh, source that we're using. Um, now, I've just renamed it from Anaconda, because I... I've just renamed it to TW. And then I've got functions, just like any other programming language, and then this is where our 100 days of code bot starts. First, we are going to authenticate, so we're gonna authorize, authenticate, we're gonna basically initialize our bot when we start the program, and then we are going to get a stream of tweets. And basically, I am searching for a hashtag, and then for every single tweet that I get in, I'm gonna check is this a retweet? And if it is, I don't care about it. Now, the second thing that I have to have in my code is people have figured out, as clever as they are, that you can abuse these hashtags. And it's like really annoying to have this like safe space where you can share what you're working on and then you have like spammers blowing it up. So I didn't anticipate this at first. And then my bot was retweeting all these crazy people and I was like so nervous and anxious about this because it's wrong. Um, so basically, we're gonna match the tweet against a regular expression, checking for some combination of words that only likely people that are doing this program would use. And I'll, we'll show you the re, I'll show you the, the regex a little bit later. Now, really simple, right? I've got my account set up here, and then down here, I'm going to like the tweet, and then retweet the tweet. And this is instant. If you go to 100 days of code right now and you tweet anything that has like the word day in it and 100 days of code, um, instant. <clears throat> and that's it. Now, <clears throat> we can also turn on a feature to follow the person, but I sort of thought that if we follow every single person that's tweeting, it's a bit too bot-like. And one of the benefits to having very few is that it makes it easy to find relevant people. Um, to, it's like a curated list. So. I, th I think that's better, so we just disabled the, the follow. Oh, I got eight people. Let's see. Um, hey, Nick, can you see anything right now? Should be okay. Let me double check my stream. 
Yeah, should be okay. Yeah, so the thing is, um, regexes are slow. They are, they are slower, but we can compile our regex in advance, so that's definitely better. Um, the other thing is, it works. So I know that it's slower, but it works. And if you think about it, getting something that works is a better technique to start than to worry too much about the engineering. Because once we understand it, we can make quick changes and then worry about the implementation later. But to be honest, um, if, I, oops, if I go to 100 days of code, if, by, by the way, if I'm talking too loud, let me know. Uh, I, you know, it's, There's going to be captions on YouTube, but I don't want to alienate people for, for being here. If I go to 100 days of code <clears throat> and we look at the, the rate or the pace of people that are using this hashtag correctly, um, it's like once every eight minutes, once every, so right, 13, 15, 18, 18, 25. The thing is, the people that are using the hashtag correctly, even if Regex was so slow to the point that it would be um, a bad decision, we still have like minutes to parse the, the tweet. So I'm not gonna say that for now, it's too important. So that's my argument, just for what it's worth. I mean, just thought I'd tell you, okay. So, let's look at the code, and then we'll, we'll turn on the, the bots in just a moment. And then I'll check the questions every couple moments, just so you guys can ask questions. I'll be checking in. All right, so think about it, right? We initialize our account for every tweet that we get from the stream. We check it if it's a retweet, ignore those. And if it doesn't match an expression, ignore those too, right? And to ignore it, we just do continue. Now you'll note, this whole thing is just a for loop. It's continuous. And we don't have to worry about like rate limiting or anything because um, there aren't enough people using the hashtag correctly for this to be an issue. Technically, if there were people using this, this hashtag like every 10 seconds, this could become a problem and then I might want to Im implement some rate limiting. Rate limiting meaning just like slowing it down. But for now, it's okay, right? And then we have like and retweet. So. Let me just talk about how this works. When we use this package in particular, we need to initialize the consumer and the, 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 key, the consumer key and the consumer secret. We get these values, they, they look like blah. We get these values from going to apps.twitter.com. And cool. We get these values from apps.twitter.com and then we put in these other values for, for I don't, to be honest, I don't know what these things do, but we need to we need to put these values in to initialize our bot. So basically, we have these four keys that we get, and we create an account, and we get the account back. I'm going to check for an error, no error, and then if there is an error, I'm going to FATA. FATA is short for fatal, and then another option that we have is that we can just warn, right? So if there's an issue, I can either warn it, I can warn, which doesn't stop the program, it just leaves a message. Or I can do FATA, which is short for fatal, which just means I crash everything. So we can't continue if we can't initialize our account. So that's an instance of where we just want to FATA. We just, we want to exit the program. And I'm decorating the error with a little string just so I know which FATA it is from another one. That's all that's really going on. Now there's other instances where you might want to warn, like right here. And here is an example of something failed, but we just want to continue our program anyway. So we have, we have both at our, our disclosure. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me check my Wi-Fi. Uh, yeah, I don't know. What I can do is turn down the resolution. Um, my only concern about that is that the code gets harder to, to read. But let me do that because this is for you guys. Hmm. Here, can you guys let me know? Is it working right now or it's not working? Yeah, I assume it's not working. Okay. 
Okay. Let's see if I'm working. The image is lagging as fuck, but the sound is okay. Yeah, I noticed that earlier too. Um, let me pause this, turn on, let me change the resolution, and then we'll try this in just a second. So stick around, it just takes a second. <laughs> 